Hi, I'm Nick Termini with the Business Spotlight, brought to you by Action Coach in North Kansas City. Today, we're here with Chris. Hey, Chris, how are you? Hey, Nick, how are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for joining us. So on the Business Spotlight, Chris, what our goal is, is to promote local businesses through business owners to pass to our local business community. And we want to go ahead and, and help you know share your story. So Chris, could go ahead and tell us about your company and, and how you got it started. Uh, sure. So uh, Chris Jones, founder of Match Right Care. Uh, Match Right Care is a patient record sharing uh, software that we built to help patients move from one doctor's office to another doctor's office with their records in hand. We're truly focused on having patients be able to control their records. Um, a little background on me is that uh, it wasn't uh, this was kind of born through tragedy. Uh, and I had a son and a five year old son that was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Uh, the doctors gave him uh, one year to live from diagnosis. And we unfortunately missed a clinical trial within that time frame. Um, and the reason why we missed it, we weren't able to get his scans, his medical records, those those scans in time to get it to the clinical trial. Um, looking back on it now, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think anything would have helped the situation that it was in, but just missing the opportunity was tough for us, right? I would yeah. go on to do um, um, uh, healthcare IT, become a director IT in a healthcare company a year later, and I would be able to see it from both sides, right? I understood from my professional side the need for the doctors to have these records to provide better and value more value care. But as a parent, you know, just a normal everyday person not being able to have those records at the time of need was just as, as valuable as anything else, you know, to get the best treatment for your loved ones or yourself in that manner. So we started building, I started building Match Right Care, uh, maybe in 2018 is when we kind of started coming up with this idea, this concept to let the patient, quote unquote, be the hub of their records, as it should be. Um, and we started this journey about three and a half years ago. We had some good opportunities to present, prevent it, present it in front of um, at Microsoft with a couple uh, dev teams there. And we started to understand the trajectory that this product could go. Uh, here we are three years later, you know, really making our impression in the healthcare space now. Wow, that's that's an incredible story. So you you went through your experience, saw a gap in where it could help, you know, patient care and, and integrate with the system and and brought it together. That's that's pretty incredible. Um, and with your company now, who is it that you uh, want to get in front of for clients and and what what's a great client success story you have for for now? Yeah, so we are. Um, our focus now is is provider organizations. What our term, our term, our internal term is. That's provider groups, or physician groups, small physician groups, large physician groups. Because at that point, to where patients are getting treatment and need to go to larger facilities, right? They need to have those records to be able to move to a certain space, uh, another doctor's office more efficiently. And our focus now is really those small, not necessarily small to mid-sized provider organizations that has patients that's going everywhere, right? Yeah. Even in rural areas or in urban areas, or those areas that has these 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 doctors that see these patients, but they need to get more care in a bigger facilities, whatever. Those records need to go with them. And it's not really a mechanism in place. And if it is, it's really designed for providers or designed for payers. We're really yeah. focused on designing this for the patients. And our focus now is really give the patient their own personal healthcare information exchange, right? Put all their data within one platform, be able to move that back and forth. And what we've looked at, our, our software is more of a platform that technology can sit on top of it, right? We want to be mm -hmm. the standard of how patient information is shared, but it really starts with the patient. Our success story, our, our focus is really those patients, right? You and I, that really has to move the, the records that it really counts, right? We're the one person that has to go to all these facilities, right? It should have a control. So having patients being able to do that is 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 very you know inspiring to us because it goes back to the point from where I built it for is that. If we had a hat that with our son, we've been able to just send that information right away. But even though, like I said, we don't think it would have helped him in, a, in that stand, in that standpoint. But the idea that we weren't able to have him just made a huge impact to why I'm sitting here today. Yeah, no, that, that's that's really an incredible story. So since you started your company and and looking at where you are now, what's what's been your growth as as a business owner and just developing your company? Uh, I think it really is. I think when you go through something and, you know, you build a startup and we call this innovation thing, right? Innovation yeah. is necessarily going in a place where nobody's been before, right? So yeah. I think the, the, the biggest part of the journey is you have, there's two things I call, there's legacy technology that our technology has to connect to. So legacy meaning old technology that we have to plug into. Uh, so yeah. we kind of got past that after the second year and kind of understand where our technology sit. But when you work in healthcare space and other things and you're innovative, you run into not only legacy technology, you run into legacy yeah. mindsets, right? So you 
you cross yeah. between that path, you figure out how this thing works, and then they, they tell you you have to have this go-to-market plan, right? What's your revenue model, whatever. Yeah. And you present that, right? But you're innovative, and it don't necessarily fit in the revenue what their expectation of it was. Yeah. But then they tell you to be innovative at the same time. So I think my biggest <laughs> growth opportunity for this is really to look at it from a from a deter view, right? I I I, I cherish the opportunity to talk to people that's experienced in the space. I, I really cherish that. But it helps me understand where the technology is now, where you know business are now, and how we truly fit in the market. Because when you have something that has some integrity behind it or some true integrity behind it, with me and my son, it would never ever de detour the direction that I want to take it. And I always go back to the core of what I built it for. If I had this here and it did this now, would it solve the problem then? Right. And yeah. that's kind of how I see it, and I always approach it that way. But I think especially as a business, whatever, you got to follow your gut and your heart and you know you're going to have some great input, some really experienced people that have been in this space. And you have to understand and kind of dissect that and understand what's valuable to you now and what's just a legacy mindset, right? And just pitch yeah. your way through there. So in, in some ways, you know, did, did you feel like you were a market disruptor coming in and changing paradigms in the way people thought? It, it was in a sense, right? I think, you know, at the core of what we do, right, is really to give the patient the information that's theirs, right? Yeah. But on the back side of that, when you think about how money is made in healthcare and space, it's really the back end people making the decision to make as much yeah. money as possible, right? So just by the nature of making a patient the hub and control it, giving them more control of records, I would say was a disruptor in the, in the idea of it, right? But yeah. it's something that's the government and everything is pushing because it should happen, right? So even though more of these regulations and rules are being changed to give patient control, there's also other opportunities for people to say, let me see how I can monetize this and have control of it. And then it takes away from the purity of what the regulation was built for is to give patient more control and sense. Um, and what we kind of focus on, we always stay focused on is really having a patient be the controller of information, right? There's not a, there was not a true revenue model up front when we first started, whatever. But now that we're going to figure out how to play in this, play this game a little bit, we figure out how uh, match right is going to be beneficial for the provider and the patient. So we came to a conclusion is that match right is not built for the large health systems per se, right? They can use it, mm -hmm. but it's really connecting that the marriage between the provider and the patient because those are two that's really making the impact. All the rest of them are data yeah. points on the back end. If we can make that marriage work, right? Get to the people that need the care, directly connect with the people that provide the care is where our focus was. And it's at that part where we glean the most opportunities in our platform. That's incredible. So, so Chris, you you have a tremendous story, and and so have, have there been mentors along the way that have helped shape you know the way that you think to to be able to get to this point? Yeah, it has. I think that you know the journey itself, right, brings you. Uh, everybody ran into good and bad. The lessons that I learned from the mistakes that we made, the lessons I learned, yeah, was, was that was really efficient to us growing where focus help us focus on the, the things we need to focus on to focus on to grow from the top to bottom i think they all were somewhat mentors to me because even now i have the most um, um knowledge i think the most inspiring movements based off the mistakes are the people that wasn't yeah. the best for me than i would people that still you know rolling with me now from day one you know i think i really understand the things that's not to do and i i i myself mostly focus on gaps and i think my team knows that as well is that you'll hear me say it all the time i understand what my gaps are don't shy away from my know what they are so that yeah. helps me now to identify the team that i need because i feel those gaps yes right? i'm very open very very open right with the things that i'm not good at things i don't handle well whatever yeah i'll try to i'll try to fill in those fill in those gaps as much as possible so i can get somebody in there to do it but for the most part i'm not trying to change who i am and what i'm doing I'm very just transparent on what I do, what I don't know, but you always see there's somebody beside me that can fill that gap that I might be missing, right? So I want, I think it's important for us as founders is I hate the the bravado-ness of sometimes we can get when we have things moving in our direction, right? I think we get lost in the idea of being confident and really not being open, you know? Yeah. Because I think sometimes confidence is good, but there's also a confidence and being, you know, vulnerable in some points, identifying those pieces, because then people that, for you to answer your question, mentors, you give those mentors something to help you mentor in space that you need the most growth, right? Yeah. And that's being open. And